Imagine a crime scene where the only witnesses can't speak, but their presence tells a story no one else can. A body lies hidden in the woods, days or weeks old, with no DNA, no fingerprints, no clues, except for the insects crawling over it. These tiny creatures, often overlooked, hold the key to unlocking mysteries of death, time, and even motive. This is the world of forensic entomology, where bugs become detectives, solving crimes that would otherwise stay buried. Tonight, we dive into the chilling science of insects in crime solving, from ancient origins to cutting edge breakthroughs that are changing justice forever. Get ready for a journey into the unseen. This is the rise of forensic entomology. Forensic entomology is the science of using insects and arthropods to aid criminal investigations, primarily by estimating the time since death, known as the post-mortem interval, PMI. Insects are nature's cleanup crew, colonizing a body within minutes of death, drawn by the chemical signals of decomposition. By studying their species, life stages and behavior, forensic entomologists can pinpoint when someone died, where the crime occurred or even how. This field isn't just about death, it's about answers, offering clues in cases of homicide, suicide, neglect and even wildlife poaching. Why is this so important? Unlike DNA or fingerprints, which may degrade or be absent, Insects are almost always present at a crime scene, especially after 72 hours, when traditional pathology becomes less reliable. They're like biological clocks, ticking through their life cycles with predictable precision. For example, blowflies can arrive within 10 minutes of death, laying eggs that hatch into maggots, which grow at rates influenced by temperature and environment. By analyzing these, entomologists can estimate PMI with startling accuracy, often narrowing it to hours. Real-world cases show this power. In 2001, Kirsten Blaise Lobato was wrongfully convicted of murder in Nevada. The absence of insect eggs on the victim's body, which should have been colonized if death occurred earlier, proved the death happened after sunset, supporting Lobato's alibi. Forensic entomologist testified, and in 2018, her conviction was overturned, freeing her after 16 years. Another case in 2004 involved a man found in a ditch in England. Blue bottle larvae indicated he died around November 27, 2003, aligning with his disappearance and ruling out foul play, confirming an accidental fall. These cases show insects don't just solve crimes, they save lives and deliver justice. To understand forensic entomology, we need to dive into the life cycle of insects, particularly necrophagous species like blowflies, Califoridae, and fleshflies, Sarcophagidae. These insects follow a predictable pattern. An adult fly lays eggs on a body, often in wounds or orifices, within hours of death. These eggs hatch into first instar larvae, maggots, within 8 to 24 hours, feeding voraciously on tissue. Maggots grow through three larval stages, instars, then pupate into a hard casing, emerging as adult flies days or weeks later, depending on species and conditions. Entomologists use this cycle to estimate PMI. By collecting larvae, identifying the species, and measuring their size or stage, they can work backward to when eggs were laid, factoring in environmental data like temperature, which speeds or slows development. For instance, blowfly larvae grow faster in warm weather, so a third instar maggot in 25 degussi might indicate three to five days since death, while cooler conditions could extend that timeline. In a 2003 UK case, the absence of fly larvae on a burned body suggested it was stored indoors, inaccessible to insects, before being dumped and set alight, helping police trace the storage unit where the victim was hidden. Environmental factors are critical. Humidity, shade or rain can alter insect activity, and entomologists must account for these using weather data or mock experiments with pig carcasses, which mimic human decomposition. 
A 2017 study showed scorpion flies, not flies, were the first to arrive at a Texas cadaver, indicating a PMI of less than two days, a new clue for short interval cases. This precision makes insects not just evidence, but time machines, revealing when death occurred with uncanny accuracy. Forensic entomology goes far beyond PMI estimation. Insects can detect drugs or toxins in a body, even when tissue is too degraded for toxicology. Maggots bioaccumulate substances like cocaine, heroin, or antidepressants as they feed, preserving them for analysis. In the 1990s case, entomologists found traces of barbiturates in maggots from a decomposed body, confirming a drug overdose that would have been missed. This field, called entomotoxicology, is revolutionizing how we investigate suspicious deaths. Insects also reveal if a body was moved. If a corpse has species native to one area but not where it's found, it suggests relocation. In the Green River Killer case, beetles on victims' bodies indicated they were dumped in a different location from where they died, narrowing the search for Gary Ridgway, convicted of 49 murders. Similarly, in a 2003 Brazilian case, blowfly larvae in an unusual head wound suggested trauma from an attack, not natural orifices, leading to an attempted rape conviction. The future of forensic entomology is bright. Advances like infrared spectroscopy and omics technologies allow precise species identification and PMI estimation, even with degraded samples. Molecular taxonomy identifies larvae by DNA, while AI analyzes insect succession patterns for faster results. Paula Magni's Smart Insects app, downloaded over 40,000 times, helps investigators collect and identify bugs correctly, bridging the gap for non-experts. These tools promise to make entomology a cornerstone of forensic science, tackling even the toughest cases. Forensic entomology has crawled into the spotlight, not only in laboratories, but in living rooms across the world. Thanks to television shows like CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, Bones, and international dramas such as Italy's R.I.S. Deliti Imperfetti, this once niche science has entered popular culture with dramatic flair. While these depictions often exaggerate how quickly results come or the absolute certainty of conclusions, they have also sparked global interest in forensic sciences. The character of Gil Grissom, often seen identifying maggot stages or linking flies to a murder timeline, is directly inspired by the real methods entomologists use, just a bit faster for the sake of storytelling. These dramatizations have had very real effects. Enrollment in forensic entomology courses has steadily risen over the past decade. According to a 2025 report from the University of Florida, one of the leading institutions in entomological research, interest in forensic entomology among undergraduates has more than doubled since 2010. Students inspired by television and true crime documentaries are now entering the field not just to collect bugs, but to bring answers to the unsolved. Yet popular portrayals also create challenges. Jurors, influenced by what's known as the CSI effect, often expect entomological evidence in every homicide trial or misunderstand its limitations. Insects are incredibly reliable under certain conditions, but they're not miracle workers. They require proper collection, correct environmental context, and expert analysis. Misuse or misunderstanding in court can lead to wrongful convictions or dismissed evidence, which is why experts like Dr. Gail Anderson emphasize careful education of both jurors and investigators. There's also the ethical dimension of forensic entomology. Harvesting maggots or beetles from a body may sound clinical, but for grieving families, it can seem invasive or even horrifying. Entomologists working in the field often find themselves balancing scientific duty with emotional sensitivity. They must explain to families why insect evidence is not only valid, but vital, how a single larva might be the only witness to a death 
long buried in silence. The humanity behind the science remains crucial to how this field is perceived and accepted. Technological progress continues to push forensic entomology forward in ways once thought impossible. In high-tech labs across the globe, scientists are now using advanced tools like thermal desorption, gas, chromatography, mass spectrometry to analyze volatile organic compounds, VOCs, released during decomposition. These VOCs, essentially the odors of decay, change over time in measurable ways, offering another layer of information about how long a body has been dead, even if insects are absent or environmental factors interfere. Another exciting development is the use of gene expression analysis. By studying which genes are active in blowfly eggs shortly after they're laid, researchers can now estimate the exact time those eggs were deposited, down to a few hours. This method, still in its early stages, could become a gold standard for ultra-precise PMI estimations. Imagine knowing not just the day someone died, but the hour, based on a clutch of insect eggs. Then there's aquatic forensic entomology, a field developed to deal with bodies found in lakes, rivers or oceans. Insects like midges and aquatic beetles, along with marine life such as barnacles or algae, can be used to estimate how long a body was submerged. In one case off the coast of Sicily, investigators determined that a body had been in the water for 12 days based on the size of the barnacle colonies attached to it. Critical information for identifying the victim and reconstructing the last moments of their life. The applications extend far beyond murder cases. Entomology is now helping in the fight against drug trafficking. Smugglers often hide drugs in shipments of produce, furniture or machinery. When those shipments are intercepted, the species of insects hiding in the packaging can sometimes reveal the origin of the cargo. For example, a 2023 Interpol case linked a cocaine shipment to a specific region in Colombia based on beetle larvae unique to that area. These small clues help law enforcement trace routes and dismantle smuggling networks. Entomology is even being used in wildlife forensics. In Africa, where elephant and rhino poaching remains rampant, investigators have used insects found on carcasses to determine when and where the animals were killed. The larvae of blowflies can reveal not just how long the animal has been dead, but also if it was killed during a protected period or in a poaching hotspot, helping conservationists and law enforcement prosecute those responsible. Mass disaster response is another vital area where forensic entomology plays a role. In situations like earthquakes, tsunamis or plane crashes, when DNA is too degraded or unavailable, insects can provide critical clues about when victims died. In the aftermath of a bombing in Southeast Asia, blowfly succession on bodies helped determine which victims died instantly and which succumbed later to injuries, information vital for medical response audits and justice for the deceased. The reach of forensic entomology continues to expand thanks to global networks like the European Association for Forensic Entomology and Trace Wildlife Forensics Network. These organizations promote cross-border collaboration, training, and standardized methods, ensuring that entomological evidence is collected and interpreted consistently worldwide. As a result, developing nations now have better access to tools that were once confined to elite labs in the West. Education plays a vital role in ensuring this science continues to grow. Workshops and certifications are now offered not just to forensic students, but to police officers, coroners, and even wildlife rangers. Mobile apps like Smart Insects help first responders photograph, tag, and preserve specimens properly until an expert can analyze them. These tools are helping democratize forensic entomology, making it available in rural and resource-limited settings. Still, challenges remain. Climate change, for example, is altering insect distribution. As temperatures rise, some species are appearing earlier or in places they weren't previously found. 
This disrupts long-standing models of succession and life cycle duration, potentially skewing PMI estimations. Forensic entomologists are now racing to update their data sets and adapt their methods to this new ecological reality, ensuring their conclusions remain reliable in a changing world. And while entomology will never replace DNA, fingerprints or ballistics, its role as a secondary or even primary line of evidence continues to grow. In rural homicides, where technology is scarce, bugs may be the only clue. In cases of extreme decomposition or skeletonization, they can be the final storytellers buzzing quietly over a mystery until a trained eye listens. This science reminds us of something profound. Justice isn't always loud. Sometimes it comes from the tiniest of creatures working unnoticed, leaving behind a trace, a mark, a moment frozen in time. Forensic entomology transforms that silence into testimony. It turns the overlooked into the essential. And it teaches us that the natural world, even in death, is never without a voice. We live in an age where the tools of justice are no longer confined to courtrooms or crime labs. They crawl, fly, burrow, and witness. Insects have watched over humanity since the beginning of time. And now, at last, we're learning to understand what they've been trying to tell us. The rise of forensic entomology is not just about science, it's about listening to the earth, to the evidence, and to the echoes of lives once lost, now finally heard.